Did you know that you can die of a broken heart? It's called broken heart syndrome or Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 67-year-old woman who came to the emergency department with complaints of nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Now, most of her laboratory studies were normal as well as the abdominal CT scan, but they got an EKG that showed significant ST elevation. What does that mean? It's a sign on an EKG which indicates that the heart is experiencing a heart attack or decreased blood flow to the heart muscle. An ST elevation heart attack is a medical emergency. Restoring blood flow to the heart during this time period is crucial to prevent permanent damage to the heart. She just had nausea and abdominal pain. She wasn't having chest pain or pain radiating down her arm. Keep in mind that women are more likely than men to experience unusual symptoms related to a heart attack, such as abdominal pain. They are more likely to be untreated for their cardiovascular problems and are more likely to die as a result of a heart attack. And it's so important as healthcare professionals that we identify these unusual symptoms as a potential cardiac source. Now, back to our patient. Laboratory studies that should be ordered in this event is something called troponin, which helps us determine if someone is having a heart attack. On her case with an ST elevation, she really needs to get to the cardiac cath lab to have her blood vessels in her heart investigated immediately to see if there is a blockage. And in her case, there was no signs of blockage. So what's going on here? I mentioned that she had recently lost her husband of, of over 45 years. She has something called Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome related to this stressful event. But the cause isn't fully understood. It is often related to a stress event in someone's life, such as the loss of a loved one, a severe illness, or, or a major life event. The cause isn't fully understood, but we do think it's related to stress hormones called catecholamines. That surge of hormones temporarily stuns the heart. Symptoms mimic a heart attack, although there is no significant blockage in the heart vessels. Key differences between a real heart attack and broken heart syndrome is that there is no blockage of vessels in broken heart syndrome, but there are EKG changes in both diseases. Troponin levels are usually mildly elevated in broken heart syndrome, but significantly elevated in a heart attack. And in most cases of broken heart syndrome, patients recover within weeks compared to an actual heart attack, which can take much longer and even have permanent effects. So let's talk about the pathophysiology. This is where the brain comes into play. It's caused by a surge of catecholamines or neurotransmitters from the brain in response to a stressful event. This can be emotional or physical stress. This stimulates our body's fight or flight mechanism. It causes too much activation of the sympathetic nervous system, which leads the heart to be overstimulated. It causes coronary microvascular dysfunction. Basically, that means that the small blood vessels that supply the heart get impaired and don't perfuse the cardiac muscle correctly. And that's why the major arteries are normal on an angiography. It stimulates a calcium overload inside of the myocytes, which are the muscular parts of the heart, and that impairs the contraction of the heart. This leads the heart to not be able to contract properly. The apex of the heart is more sensitive to these catecholamines. That's the left ventricle, and it results in hypokinesis or impaired contraction, and then that part of the heart takes on a balloon shape to resemble a Takotsubo pot, hence the name. This is also called apical ballooning syndrome that you can see on an echocardiogram of the heart and is pretty classic for broken heart syndrome. And in fact, her echocardiogram did show this. This disease is often almost exclusively seen in postmenopausal women. In fact, over 90% of this diagnosis occurs in postmenopausal women. Now, why is that? It's because they have lower estrogen levels. Estrogen typically has a protective effect on the heart. It modulates the catecholamine response. So after menopause, this protective effect is lost, makes the heart more susceptible to stress. So this is a very interesting way of how the brain can affect the heart. And like I said earlier, the good news is that this is usually a transient effect and most people completely recover within days to weeks after the diagnosis. Beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and diuretics may be used for symptomatic support while the patient is healing. And usually another echocardiogram is performed a few weeks later in order to prove that the patient has fully recovered. Our patient's case, she completely recovered within seven days. 
And although her physiological broken heart healed, her emotional broken heart is still healing. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case. And stay tuned to my content all month while I continue to educate about how the brain and the heart interact.